How many of you know we need to be excited about being in church? Wouldn't you agree? Should be the greatest day of the week to all of us. Well, this morning, I'm going to kind of pick up where we left off. We talked last week about, uh, I started a new series called Taking God at His Word. How many of you know the Word of God is the most powerful thing in our life? Whether we realize that, it's more than ink on paper. It is the power and spiritual life of every Christian. In fact, without the Word of God, we really wouldn't have a guideline or a covenant with God to understand. We couldn't understand really what was happening. But there's a couple scriptures I want to read, and you don't find them in your notes, so I'd like you to kind of write them down or open your Bible to St. John chapter 8. And I want to preface this by saying some things that if we're going to really take God at his word, we're going to have to start understanding truth. How many of you know the word truth really in a lot of ways in America has lost the real meaning of what truth is? And I don't, don't, uh, I'm not trying to put anybody down, but to be honest, I'm not sure our world really wants truth any longer. Or if they only want truth according to their perspective of what truth is. How many of you know we cannot understand real truth without the Word of God? Amen. Because everything else, how many of you would agree that man is messed up a little? Amen. And what they want is they want truth according to their own opinion of what truth is. And sadly enough, the opinion of the world's truth is pretty contrary to the Word of God. And yet there is a freedom that comes by knowing the truth. John 8, 31 says, And Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word. Yes. Everybody say, where do, where do I abide? Come on, church. You abide in the word of God. In other words, outside the word of God, we don't really know truth. Because it says, abide in my word. You are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. In other words, there's a freedom that comes by truth. Yet today, really in society, if I can be transparent with you, without any apology, we send people to school to trade opinion, if you will, to truth. And I don't know, I mean, I, I know we've had a number of people in our church and you know, but we really openly, and this is why our world, I think, is as confused as it is, is because we send people like lawyers and different people to go to, church, to, go to school to learn how to twist the truth. How many of you know, and I don't say they do that intentionally, but I don't know if you realize this, but about 70% of all politicians are lawyers. And we've kind of done away with the truth, and this is why people don't really trust the justice system, they don't trust politics, they no longer trust in America, yet America started out by these words in our Constitution, for these truths we hold evident that all men are created equal. Yes. What was the word in there? These truths. And yet we've done away really openly, if I can be transparent with you, to transferring truth to what our opinion is. And how many of you know, it also says in this same book, John 17, 15, and I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. In other words, our world doesn't really know truth, and this is why it's so confusing when you come to the church. And truth is spoken to you by the word of God and the anointing of God, and yet at the same time, because we live in a world Jesus was praying for his disciples here, and he was saying, I don't want you to take them out of the world, but I don't want them to be as the world. Yes. Come on, church. Yes. Thank you for that one amen. amen. <laughs> but it goes on to say these words. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Amen. Your word, his word, is truth. Everybody say, His Word, His word. My, Bible, My Bible is truth. Is truth. 
In other words, if we're going to want to find truth, where are we going to have to go to find it? The Word of God. Not the local opinion, not the newspaper, not the latest magazine. But you've got to go to the Word. And this is why the enemy, if you will, fights the Word of God being in society. In our court system, we used to put our hand on the book called the Bible and say, we will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Correct? All of us know that. Now they will not allow a Bible in the courtroom to lay their hand on. Our world is trying to deceive us as a people of God to draw our own truth and to hear the twisted truth. And I don't apologize to preach like that because I realize this is hard considering most people don't live the truth though they have the Bible and they uh, know and have many of the Word of God but they don't read the Word of God for themselves so how are they going to know the truth? Sandy read me a story that she found online last night it was kind of humorous These, this couple invited the pastor over for dinner and when he came over for dinner, after he left, the couple said, I think the pastor stole my spoon. <laughs> and so they kept dialoguing about this, the husband and wife, about the pastor stealing their spoon. And so a year goes by, and they have the pastor and his wife over for dinner again, and finally it came up in the conversation and the husband said, my wife thinks you stole the spoon the last time he was here. <laughs> and she, he said, I didn't steal the spoon. I put it in your Bible. Oh. Come on, church. How many times, how, how much goes by before you're in the word of God to find the truth? You know, it's like that story. Openly, we need to remember the power of truth is found in the word of God. Amen. And outside of it, because really, if we're going to recognize the power, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. God doesn't want us out of the world. God doesn't want his Bible out of the world. What he wants is for us to know the truth and take it to a lost and dark world. Amen? Amen. And that's really what our, our real, if you will, profession is in life, is to know the truth enough ourselves that when the false truth comes up outside these four walls, that we know how to stand up for the truth. Because we found the spoon we thought the pastor took. Come on, church. How many of you know if we open our Bible, we know that he didn't steal the spoon? Yes. Tap your neighbor and say, he's preaching better than I'm amen. And just tell him that right now. Hallelujah. And so the anointing of that, I think we can find a great illustration of this. And this is where we were last week. In uh, Exodus 14, we see the children of Israel. They're set free now from slavery. And one of the things that I've always realized about being a Christian is if you have a slave mindset, the truth can never be really forthright in your life. If you're a slave to the world, <coughs> you can never really know the real power of God, that you're a son and daughter of the Most High King. Amen? Amen? And you no longer have to fear or doubt. But this is what Paul, I mean, this is what Moses writes to the Israelites at the Red Sea. Now remember, this passage of Scripture really is laid out in a, in a format where they've been delivered, the nine plagues, They've been delivered now from Pharaoh and Egypt. They're leaving to go find the promised land. They come to the Red Sea. They camp for a few days to get rest. And now all of a sudden, they look behind them, and Pharaoh's army is coming up behind them to kill them. And the Red Sea lies before them. And how many of you know that I think a lot of the world today is in that same position? Our world seems to be gaining on us all the time. Does it seem like time is going faster than it's ever gone? I know for young people that's hard for you to understand, but man, it just seems like Sunday comes by before I realize it. And I mean, I love it because Sunday is my favorite day. I get to minister to you all. I don't know if it's your favorite day, but it's my favorite day to preach and anoint the Word of God. But at the same time, it does just seem like time is rolling along. 
But the anointing of that is this. If we are going to know the truth, if we're going to have the real sonship that God wants, we can't go by everything we see. Because I think many people are seeing this, though something before them and something behind them that really is destructive, if you will. But how many of you know we can take God at his word? I said we can take God at his word. And if we're going to take God at his word, this is what Moses says to them in this dilemma. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will (coughs) accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Now Moses makes five statements in that, those two verses. He makes five points that I want us to look at about truth. Number one, he says these words. Do not be afraid. Fear will always captivate and ruin your tomorrow. Hello? Hello? It will always keep you. You will be like the Israelites when they get to the promised land and the Jordan River. And you'll always see the giant instead of the God you serve. For there are giants in the land. How many of you know that they brought out the plenty? They seen the grapes, the, the, if you will, all the things they brought out. One clump of grapes took two men to carry between a pole but yet they seen the plenty of the promised land, but all the spies, but two, only seen the giants. How many of you know if you always have your focus on what's in the world, you'll never see into the spiritual? The supernatural, the power, the anointing of God. And that's where truth always takes us. But how many of you know our eyes and our emotions can always fool us? This is why it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Everybody say, that's what the enemy is trying to rob me from. Power, love, and a sound mind. And this is why most of the time, most problems begin with some form of fear. And that fear will become really, if you will, a cage that we end up living in if we're not careful. Where the door is wide open, but we're not leaving the cage. God's opened the door, but how many of you know you got to walk out the other side of that door? Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Amen. Number two, we see also that he said, stand still and see the salvation of God or the Lord. Everybody say, sometimes I need to stand still. In other words, he was saying, stand still, but he didn't say just stand still. He didn't even say stand and look at the army, or he didn't even say stand and see what God's going to do. He said, stand still and see your salvation. Everybody say, my salvation. salvation. I don't think we think about ourselves. Do you realize one of the spokes, we've talked about this before, but one of the spokes of salvation, one of the words or meaning is deliverer. Stand still and see the deliverance is what he's really saying. God's delivered you before. He'll deliver you again. Don't forget what I can do through my word. Amen? Amen. Everybody say, I can can be delivered delivered again again, and again again, and again. again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you believe that and the power of that and that anointing, then you need to recognize the truth lies in the open door that God desires for our life. And he's telling us, stand still and see your salvation. Do you realize that you should recognize, and I think that, The reason that you can't even be delivered again is because once you got saved, you were already delivered the first time. Even when you got saved, you were delivered. That's what that word literally means, salvation. It means to be taken not completely out of the world, but you're no longer of the world. You've been delivered from those things. And he said, stand still and see what I'm going to do for you. I did it for you before with your salvation. I did it for you before, and I will do it again. How many of you know God's answer is always yes and amen? 
when it comes to... Everybody say yes and amen. Hallelujah. Yes and amen. So if we're going to see the power of that, then the next thing we need to understand, number three, we talked about that the Egyptians are gone forever. These Egyptians you see, you will see no more forever. How many of you know forever is pretty good? Amen. Come on, church. How many of you know you're not going to be saved? You are saved. Yes. You're not going to go to heaven. You're on your way to heaven. Yes. I mean, you're, maybe you're not resident there yet, but your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. And when you get there, they're going to say, enter into your glory. Hallelujah. Man, I'm excited this morning. You guys are pulling on me here. This is the second time I get to say this, hallelujah. And I tell you right now, I'm talking as much to myself. We need to remember that truth is our real freedom. Yes. That the power of truth is that anointing that sets us free. Hallelujah. And this is why the enemy fights truth in every hand. Because where there isn't truth, there cannot be really God. Because uh, this sounds very harsh, but it's so true. God said every liar will have their place in the lake of fire. That's how much truth, that's how powerful truth is to God. This is why it's important for your word to be yes and amen or your word to be concrete and realize that your word counts for something. When you say yes, that means yes, that's truth. Come on, church. And the anointing of that. And how many of you know we've lost a lot of that in America? And yet our country was literally founded on those things. It was founded on truth and the power of truth. And this is why our legal system, our justice system, our political world, all was balanced on not contracts, but truth. And when that truth is absent, how many of you know, there's a void between God and what can happen. And this is why it's so imperative to be a person of the truth. Like I said, I think we've lost this because the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. In other words, really those addictions, those habits, those failures in life, you will see no more. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> I mean, you know, I shared this and I'm going to go ahead and share it even though we're online right now and for all the people that are out there. In my family, just like anybody else, I came into the body of Christ with some things into my life that I didn't like. And um, I never had the same problems, but my, my own family, truthfully, my dad particularly, and I love him, and, and he's now gone home, and he came to know the Lord at 62 years old and rededicated his life, and so I know he's waiting in heaven. But how many of you know when I was young, he was pretty much an absent dad? Um, he had problem with alcohol. He smoked from the time he was 13 until he was 62 when he got saved. Um, and he had certain patterns or I may leave generational curses that was on his life. And how many of you know those generational curses will try to attach themselves to us if we're not careful? I mean, have you ever said, well, I'll never be like my dad or my mom and you're saying something and you're like, oh my gosh. That's my mom standing there. Come on, church. Has anybody ever done that in here? Well, how many of you know there's a lot to be said about also the unseen world of our life? Not just the seen world, but the unseen world of things that try to attach themselves to our lives. And sadly enough, is I got my worth at, let me praise my dad first. My dad, he would party. I mean, he would go out and have a good time on the weekend, sometimes not come home till 2 o'clock in the morning on Sunday night, and have to be to work at 5 or 4 o'clock in the morning. But how many of you know, I never seen him miss a day of work. Even though he had partied, he'd get up and go to work anyway. And openly, that was the one good thing I did get from my dad as well. Because my work ethic came, I used to have to be careful of not being a workaholic. I've learned a lot of things but I'm going to even know there were other things like alcohol and tobacco that even tried to attach itself to my life. I've never really smoked, but I used to always, whenever I would, before I was a Christian, this is B.C., by the way, I want you to know, which is before Christ. Everybody say, before Christ. before Christ. So all the people out there know what I'm talking about. Well, there were other things that tried to attach themselves to my life, but my dad got saved at 62, and 
when he did, he gave my mother that night, they, went, they moved back to Oklahoma, which is where we grew up, and they had moved back on what we call the home place at Eufaula Lake in Oklahoma. And um, they went to a little Southern Baptist church and re-accepted the Lord, both of them, in the same night. My dad came home that night to the lake house and gave my mom his cigarettes and said, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Now, remember, he had smoked as long as I can remember since he was 13. And he was 62. In fact, my mom took the cigarettes and put them in a cupboard thinking he'd want them the next morning. To my knowledge, my dad never smoked another cigarette, cigar, pipe, whatever. Not that I think smoking will make you not make heaven. It just makes you smell like you've already been to hell. <laughs> Amen. But I do believe smokers make heaven. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm just saying for him, he got delivered from that. In my adult life, I do not ever remember seeing my dad without either a mixed drink or a beer in his hand if he was out of work. Ever. I don't care if it was morning. I don't care if it was night. Because alcohol was part of his life. And the sad thing is, growing up, I didn't always enjoy the holidays. Because any reason to drink hard was Christmas, New Year's, Easter, 4th of July, birthday, whatever. When you have that addiction, you know what I'm talking about. And so that's why I'm to this day even opposed to alcohol. Not because there again, that I don't think you can drink. But most people can't handle drinking. There comes a time when stress is there and you want one or two, three, many, too many. Amen? Amen. Everybody still love pastor here? I'm just being transparent with you. But he gave that up completely, just cold turkey. To my knowledge, never drank another alcoholic beverage the rest of his life. But there was one area in his life he couldn't give up. And after 42 years of marriage, because he couldn't give that up, my parents finally divorced. And how many of you know they have been divorced a number of times? Now, I'm only telling you this because there are things that these Egyptians you will see no more. You don't have to live under that. You don't have to submit to that. You have a new DNA spiritually now. And if you'll give it to the Lord and find out what the truth is for your life. Come on, church. I'm preaching to you right here because this is imperative that all of us learn that. But we don't have to accept those Egyptians that try to attach themselves. We don't have to look to the past and say the past looked better than the future. Because if those Egyptians are not killed or taken care of, how many of you know they can ruin your life even though you're a born-again Christian? Come on, church. We all know people that will not give things up because or their own philosophy of life and the truth cannot really reign. And what happens is when fear and these things are in our life, what begins to happen is it ruins our tomorrows. Yes. And if you can't overcome those things and let them things go and now feed on the word of God. How many of you know there's plenty of things? You know, why do, there is so many beverages out there that are non-alcoholic. Yes. I mean, get a life. I mean, you know, why do you want something to rob your brain? And I don't mean that bad, but I just know and have seen what it can do in yes. lives. It can literally ruin your life. It is a drug. Yes. I don't care if it's legal or not. Yeah, come on. It is something that when you give yourself over to it, it can ruin your life. Oh, yes. But how many of you know these Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. There's complete deliverance with yes. God. Hallelujah. I said there's complete deliverance with God. And so for us to understand that, and then let me close with this, that we need to understand that his promises are yes and amen. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God, everybody say promises. promises. All the promises of God are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. In other words, where does he manifest this? Through us. We don't have to fear the Egyptians any longer because they have no power over us. Amen. Though we might have been a slave to it at one time, we no longer have to be a slave to it again. Amen. And that's why we can learn so much from this story, the power of this story and the anointing of what happened here because the God that we serve 
can fight for us, which is my next point. The Lord will fight for you. You know, as hard as you think it is, anything is possible with Him. It's not easy to give something up that's got a stronghold in your life. But how many of you know that you can overcome that stronghold? If you find the truth, the truth will make you free. How many of you know that's why I've said so often that the enemy fights the Word of God? Because in the Word of God is truth, and it gives us that liberty. And we're no longer alone. God has equipped us for the battle. This is what I wrote. God has equipped us for the battle by giving us His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit and His Word, His power. We are princes, prince and princesses in the kingdom of God, co-laborers with Him that we may be victorious. Hallelujah. Highlight that in your notes. If there's a situation in your life that's from the Egyptian life you once knew, underline that. Put it somewhere. Read it. For God's promises are always yes and amen. And the anointing of God. And then lastly, it says... Now, thanks be to God who always leads us into triumph. Everybody say, thanks be to God. Never forget the thanking before the victory. Come on, church. Say it out loud. Thank you, Lord. I am delivered. I'm free. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. I am not ruled by my mind or my emotions. For the greater one lives in me. Now, if you believe that, give what a praise clap in this house. He always leads us into triumph in Christ. And through our difficulties, he will even make things known to us. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the peace of God, be still and know, this is what he said, be still and know that he is God. He is the God of victory, promise for every life situation. We need truth and trust in Him. Psalm says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will exalt you in the earth. Hallelujah. Come on, church. The Word says in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, You will keep him in perfect peace. Everybody say perfect. Perfect. The word there is, you will keep him in mature, grown-up peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Everybody say everlasting strength. So bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, as this word has went out, minister to our hearts. Let your heart, Father, be the one we draw to and draw on. Your truth is the light of the world. And we trust in you, God. And we lean not on our own understanding, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, let that set the course of my life. Now say out loud with me, I break any generational curse that tries to attach itself to my life. I am a son and daughter of the Most High God. And He has delivered me. Come on, say it again like you mean it. He has delivered me from the powers of darkness to the power of light. In His Word, I will live my life to the full, to the full, through Jesus Christ, my Savior. Amen.